First of all, I'm very honored that you are all here. I'm honored that many of you came from far away to be here. I'm honored that the cathedral community is hosting us. I'm honored that we have visitors here, leaders of the different faiths here in Colorado Springs, where you honor us with your presence. So we pray better together than alone. So thank you so much for being here. We are preparing to celebrate Saints Peter and Paul tomorrow. Two great members of our family, powerful intercessors who show us, I believe, how to interact with Jesus, and maybe more so how Jesus interacts with us. So first of all, St. Paul, when I was 15 years old, I'm the fourth out of 10 children growing up in Grand Island, Nebraska, it came time for a confirmation and we were encouraged to pick a, a patron saint. My two older brothers whom I admire, I admire all of my siblings, they both chose Paul as their confirmation name and I thought I couldn't go wrong if I followed them, so I picked Paul, not knowing much about who St. Paul was. I'm struck by how much St. Paul suffered. If you imagine, this was a man who was persecuting Christians. He met Jesus Christ. Everything changed. And then he came back. Try to imagine if you were one of those early Christians. Try to imagine if he had persecuted one of your friends or family members. First of all, you would think he's a spy. And then if we were not able to share the forgiveness of Christ, we would be resentful about what he had done before. But St. Paul never stopped. He kept on going and going. St. Paul himself says, three times he was beaten with rods. Once he was stoned. At least three times he was shipwrecked. He spent a night and a day adrift at sea. And he kept on going. St. Paul went into Gentile territory. That means he went into communities and cultures that did not know much of Jesus Christ. And I'm struck that maybe that's what we're called to do today again. I think we admit that much of our culture, we cannot assume anymore that they all know the story of Jesus. In our Catholic tradition, we cannot assume that they know their Catholic faith, nor are they practicing it. So in a sense, we are sent into mission territory, apostolic mission to somehow proclaim who Jesus is for me and my life and for you and yours. And it's not just for those of us who are ministers or minister in the church, it's for anybody. Those of you who raise children in your work and in your schools and in your neighborhood, does your belief in Jesus do anything to enhance any of those relationships? And then St. Peter, three weeks ago I uh, was on retreat and I spent one day with St. Peter next to Doubting Thomas, who probably had the greatest profession of faith, right? He met the risen Lord and he said, my Lord and my God. St. Peter maybe has the second greatest profession of faith when Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Messiah. You're the one we've been waiting for. You're the one who will come and set everything right. So Peter got it absolutely clear. Then two paragraphs later, Peter cannot stand Jesus talking about resurrection and Jesus calls him Satan. You go from the best answer ever to now being called Satan by our Lord Jesus Christ. Three weeks ago, I was on retreat, and my retreat director asked me to spend four prayer periods with different images of Peter in the scriptures. The first one is when Jesus comes across the water, and Peter tries to walk on the water with him. Um, the second one is when Peter makes the profession, you are the Christ. Then the third one is when Peter denies Jesus three times. And the last one is when Jesus allowed Peter to say, I love you three times after he had been raised from the dead. Well, I sat down for my first prayer session. I was in the boat. I was with Peter, but Jesus never came. And then Peter stood up and he grabbed my hand and he led me directly to the Last Supper. And he forcefully and lovingly sat me down in a chair. And I looked down and there was Jesus with a basin and a towel and a pitcher of water. And he started to wash my feet. I just sat there for an hour and let Jesus wash my feet. I've never been so humbled in my life and if Jesus has never washed your feet, it's really great. <laughs> the second prayer period then, I was in Caesarea Philippi, and I was with Peter, and we were waiting for Jesus to come and to ask us, who do you say that I am? But Jesus never showed up. So Peter stood up, took my hand, led me right to the Last Supper, forcefully and lovingly put me down in a chair, and there was Jesus with a basin and a pitcher of water and a towel. 
and he started to wash my feet again. The same thing happened the other two prayer periods. So why do I bring that up to you? Bishop-elect Galka must have dirty feet and needs all the help he can get. <laughs> but I think even more so how key it is to allow Jesus to care for you, to allow Jesus to look at you, to allow Jesus to wipe you clean, to allow Jesus to show you that he loves you. And at the end of that day, I had spent a day just being loved by my Lord, and I could not wait to go out and tell people about it. So again, for those of us in ministry, or for anybody who's a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ, we got to first know how much Jesus loves us, how much he wants to be in your life. He's fascinated by you. He's ever ready to wash away that part of you that you think is so bad that it's the worst thing in the world. Our Savior has come and he shows us the way. And then maybe after we've been loved by the Lord, then we can become more like him for the rest of the world. I conclude in a sermon in the year 395 by St. Augustine. Both apostles, Peter and Paul, share the same feast day. For these two were one, and even though they suffered on different days, they were as one. Peter went first, and Paul followed. And so we celebrate this day made holy for us by the apostles' blood. Let us embrace what they believed. Let us embrace their life. Let us embrace their labors. Let us embrace their sufferings. Let us embrace their preaching. Let us embrace their confession of faith. Then we may know how much our Lord Jesus loves each one of us.